Um, so let's go ahead and run through the C13 exercises. So first we have matching uh, graphs with the parent graph. Uh, let's take a peek at this. So this is just a flat line. So that would be like y is a constant, right? X can move. It can move horizontally, but y is a constant. We're not moving vertically. And uh, when I say y is a constant, that's as good as saying f of x equals 1. So there you go. Okay, this is what a cubic looks like. Um, cubics, uh, they are either a lazy n or you reflect it and they're sort of a lazy n going downhill. Um, and right here, this is what a square root looks like. And right here, this is like a 1 over x. So there we go. Now, um, since they also have an option of a 1 over x squared, um, maybe I'll say a little bit about the different options that show up here. So, I mean, you can ultimately just graph these. Um, but so absolute value of x looks like that. Um, negative absolute value of x would look like that. Right? OK, um, we have 1 over x squared. So because that's even, um, if it's a negative number or a positive number, it squares to the same thing. So that means whatever it looks like for the positive x's, it also needs to look that way for the negative x's. So that's how a 1 over x would look, whereas, sorry, a 1 over x squared would look, whereas a 1 over x, um, if you divide by negative, you get a negative, which is why the y's are negative for negative x's and positive for positive x's. Okay, so that's that one. Um, let's take a peek at another. So translate in parabola two steps. So honestly, with this, um, I figure you just put it in Desmos, uh, but I will say that the way this works, so we have x minus 5 squared plus 4. Um, when x equals 5, that's when the thing you are squaring is equal to 0. And that's a special spot in your parabola. And so when the thing you square is 0, when this is equal to 0, then y is equal to 4, right? Because y is equal to this, and so you have something squared plus 4, and the something being squared is 0, so you get 4. So anyway, um, the spot when x is 5 and y is 4, that's called the vertex of your parabola. And then it opens up. And I know it opens up because um, there's just a number 1 sitting here. Uh, but the point is that it's not negative. Uh, this is positive. So uh, if instead you had something like y is and then a negative number, and then like x minus 5 squared plus 4, then as this grows, we get more and more negative. But here we're getting more and more positive. So it'll be something like this. And so you just want to move this spot over to 5, 4, right? So 5, up 4, there you go. And that's how you do it. So if I hit check, right? You know, yay, yay. All right. Uh, finding the vertex and symmetry of graph of a problem. So that should pop up here now. All right. So again, I left this because you can mostly just answer it by looking at the picture. The, the parabola opens upward. Right. Um, what's the vertex? So you can kind of zoom in here and you can see that sort of minimal spot um, is when x is 4 and y is 1. So you would enter 4, 1. Find the axis of symmetry. So here are the axis of symmetry. Um, so remember at so 4, 1 is our vertex. That means this is symmetric about the line x equals 4. So if you move away from x equals 4, you're going to move symmetrically. Right? So uh, you would write x equals 4 in that box. Uh, find the intercepts, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and you can see there's just a y-intercept um, right here at uh, y equals 5, and that's it. So, all right, cool. So that's how you would do those kinds of problems. Uh, graphing a parabola of this form. So that's probably going to be very similar to one we just saw. Uh, so this time you need to draw and connect. And so again, it comes down to finding that vertex, and then just plug in a few things. So um, based on this equation, so y is negative 2, x minus 3 squared minus 4. And um, we can see that there's a negative in front. And so as the thing that we square gets bigger and bigger, we're going to get more and more negative. So we're going to open downward. Um, now, when x is equal to 3, that's when the thing you're squaring is 0. And that's as small as it could possibly be. Uh, and so that's going to be the x value of the vertex. And so when x is equal to 3, all this dies, it's all 0, and we just get negative 4. So um, the spot 3, negative 4, or actually let me just, uh, just put this in here. So we have 3, come on, work, you're not working. OK, well, you know what? Don't worry about it. So we have 3, negative 4, so that's like somewhere around here. Uh, oops, maybe here. There we go. Uh, bah, bah. And then it's going to open down. And so I would just plug in like 
you know, x equals four and x equals two. I'm trying to be symmetric around three, okay? So if I go to the right one, I should go to the left one around three. Um, plot a few things and then you should be able to connect them with this, uh, you know, plot connector thing. So uh, also if you just plug in on Desmos, it should just work, so. All right, finding zeros of a quadratic expression. So this is important. Um, when I say that, sorry, I'm trying to get to the other tab. There we go. When I say it's important, um, what I mean is it's uh, it, it, it's probably going to show up on the exam. Uh, finding zeros, so you can just use a quadratic um, equation, right? Now, another option is to factor this. Um, if you're good at factoring and if that's fast, um, oops, plus three. Okay, but you can also just quadratic um, quadratic equation this. And if you forget, you can ask. I don't care. I'll tell you the quadratic equation, right? There you go. So in this case, B is equal to negative 4, C is equal to negative 21, and A is equal to 1. And so you just plug them all in and get what you get. Um, but what you're going to find is that the zeros happen when X is equal to 7. That's one way to make it 0. And the other one is when X is equal to negative 3. So, all right. Uh, let's go back down to where we were. All right, word problem involving minimum or maximum. Fantastic, okay. So my plan for this was to have you basically just graph and um, see, like Desmos will just tell you the minimum and max. So this is a parabola that opens down. And if you click on the parabola in Desmos, it'll tell you what that maximum value is, okay? Now, the way you technically solve these, you have to complete the square. Um, it's kind of cumbersome and a little bit outdated because of how much we have technology-wise nowadays. So um, just just graph it. And um, I just want to introduce the word maximum. It's it's a very intuitive word, okay? <laughs> it's, it's the highest spot on the graph. So anyway, you'll be fine with that. Just graph it. Um, that type of question is also going to show up in your future. You know, catch my drift. All right. Uh, write an equation in quadratic given its graph. Okay, cool. So let's take a peek at this. So... All right, by now I was hoping that you'd catch on in the form that these graphs have. And so they all looked like there was some number and then X minus another number squared plus another number, okay? And now the vertex, so in this problem, my vertex is one and negative four. That one tells you what this value is. And, uh, oops, I want a different color, there we go. The minus four, tells you what this value is, okay? And so we now have y is equal to some number, x minus one squared minus four, right? Because plus negative four is the same as um, minus four. So in order to get this last value, we just use the other point given. The other point says that when x is four, y is minus 13. So let's use that. So I know that minus 13 oops, is my y value. And that happens when x is four. So I plug in four. And now I can solve for a, right? So um, this is equal to a, three squared is nine, so times nine minus four. And you know, let's go ahead and add four, that goes away, and now we have plus four, that's negative nine. Ah, then we divide by nine, divide by nine, we find out that a is negative one. And so, okay, now we have our equation. This is a negative one. And so then, you know, that is what I would type in that box. Cool, and I think that's it for this. Uh, yep, that's all for C13. All right, see you next time.